So here's Jamie Dimon. This is a man that's running, uh, you know, Chase that, you know, depending on what numbers you look at, on a daily basis, around $7 trillion moves with Chase. Okay, money comes in, money goes. $7 trillion? $7 trillion buys, Jeez. purchases, transfers. That's a lot of money, you know, that this company uh, has influence over. And he's on CNBC. And look at the way he breaks down the 2024 election and how the left— mm have been saying certain things. Just watch this and pay very close attention. Maybe maybe the most powerful man in the financial industry today, Jamie Dimon. Go ahead. People are growing. They're hungry to grow. They're innovating. It's, it's everywhere. It's not just Silicon Valley. So we've got this great hand. But when people say MAGA, they're actually looking at people voting for Trump, and they think they're voting, and they're basically scapegoating them, that you are like him. Uh, and, but I don't think they're voting for Trump because of his family values. Now, if you look, just take a step back, be honest. He was kind of right about NATO, kind mm -hmm. of right about immigration. Mm -hmm. He grew the economy quite well. Trade, China China ta virus. Tax reform worked. Wow. He was right about some of China. I don't, th I don't like no, what he did. No, I said China virus. Yeah, I understand. When he, when he, yeah. Oh, shut right. up. He, and I don't like how he said things about I Mexico. Oh, I don't like, he, but he words. wasn't wrong about some of these critical <sighs> issues. And that's why they're voting for him. And, and I think people should be a little more respectful of our fellow citizens. And when you guys have people up here, you should, have, you should always ask the why. Not like it's a binary thing. You're supporting right. Trump. You're not supporting Trump. It, Why are you supporting Trump? It's hard to hate Trump? 75 million of your fellow Americans. And it's, I, I agree. It's done the left makes you know, the it Democrats pretty easy. The have done a pretty good job <laughs> with the deplorables, the hugging onto their Bibles and their beer and their guns. I mean, really? Like, can we just stop that stuff and actually grow up and treat other people with respect and That's listen right. to them a little bit? You know who he's talking to? Hillary Clinton. Yeah, come in and Just for one second right there, Rob. By the way, what this is the one thing that popped out. I'm a very I – observe, I observe a lot of things. Look at what pin he's wearing. Ukraine. Is that a Ukraine pin? Give me a break, bro. You're in the is United that States. Though? Can That's you punch a in a little bit? That's 100% the Ukraine pin. What is that, the Davos pin? It's yellow and it's blue. That's the Ukraine pin. So, Mr. $7 million, all this money – that's the thing that you're trying to represent is, you know what that's saying? War, money, giving away. To, I, I, don't, I don't like that. I it could it. also mean anti-authoritarian regimes like uh, Putin. It could also mean that. Oh, yeah, the guy that was going to start World War III and he's in Trump's pocket. I'm just, I, I, know I, know that, I know that you're a fan of Putin. I'm look not. At that. Well, look, look at that. By the way, by the way, by the way, very good observation because why wear that when you can wear the red, white, and blue, the yes. most beautiful, you know, you know, flag. Why didn't you wear that? Totally get that. But you know where he's at when he's having this conversation. Tom, what do you think about when someone like him who, you know, many would say he's supported presidents on the left, you know, and, and he's probably not a pro-Trump guy. He says something like this. What does this do to money people in Wall Street? Forget about what it influences the average day-to-day -day person. How about the Wall Street guy that's like, oh, my God, did you hear what Jamie did? Did you hear what Jamie said? Did you hear what Jamie said? What kind of influence does he hold and what does he do? Jamie Dimon has consistently been either a calming force or a rational force. When you had the interest rates and they were stepping up, 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 and everybody was kind of freaking out because yeah. Ben Bernanke, what do we have, eight increases or whatever it was in one year? He was the calming force. He was the stabilizing force. When the banks failed, remember we had, people forget, one year ago we had banks failing and we built a special federal program to bail them out. Remember that? It was an emergency program, what was going on. Jamie Dimon. Now, was he opportunistic to take advantage of that? Sure he is. But I see a rational force and a stabilizing force. And I hear echoes in his voice of the things that like Bill Maher said. And the thing that, that we saw John yesterday talking about it and rolling his eyes, leaning back and talking. I think Jamie Dimon hit it on the head. Why don't we grow up a little bit and ask people why they support him and not make it some binary choice that you, you, you endorse all of his family values. I think that is the most eloquent part of what he said. I don't, Trump's, I don't support Trump's family values, but here, 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 and here, he rationally and elegantly did it. I think he's going to have a calming force on Wall Street, and I think there's a hedge going on in that calming voice. Adam, because, what do you think? So I think we're, I think Jamie Dimon is at exactly where I'm at politically, is that we weren't fans of what was going on in 2015 and 2016. And what we've also realized is that a large part of why we weren't fans was because the media doctoring up what we saw. So I think with everybody, you have to evolve and you have to take in new information. And this guy's what I would call a rational actor. And you're seeing what's been happening over the last four years. And Biden campaigned on bringing people together, not being so divisive. That's the reason that he beat Trump. Trump, 
represented chaos at that time or perceived chaos. But what we realize now is that people, rational people, people who are reasonable, people that are process information, people that are, they have the ability to evolve and not cling to their position, say, you know what? Maybe this guy wasn't as bad as the media made it out to be. Maybe he isn't this racist. We all know how watered down racist is a term these days. So someone like Jamie Dimon is looking back and saying, listen, guys, you, MSNBC, CNBC, NBC, mainstream media, you're kind of guilty. So I'm going to be a, a gentleman here, and I'm going to actually do what I can, arguably the most powerful man in finance, other than maybe Larry Fink, BlackRock. Yep. So when he gets on there and starts semi-lecturing the hosts of MSNBC and directly lectures Hillary Clinton saying, listen, the basket of deplorables comment, the clinging to your guns and clinging to your Bibles, guys, ask why. Do better research. Dig deeper. So I'm right where Jeremy, Jamie Dimon is I these got a days. Score, I got a score I, I want you to give everybody here. Specifically, Tom, I want to start off with you. Score everybody moving forward at what percentage their establishment, what percentage their non-establishment. Okay? Mm. For example, what would you put the split on Trump? What's Trump's split on establishment, non-establishment? He's like... So, he's like 90, 10 against. Okay, so 90% non-establishment, 10% establishment. Yep. Score DeSantis. 60, I would say 70, 30, yes. He is establishment. Yeah. Put Haley. Oh, my gosh. She's 90, 10, the other way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm is, with, she's do you understand what I'm yeah. doing sure. right now? Yes. 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 Okay, so remember, nobody is 100-0, okay? Non-establishment. Nobody is because... No matter what, you have to negotiate with the yeah, establishment. You have to okay, be so you can't be a hundred. If you're a hundred zero, you're an anarchist, unreasonable. You can't. Yeah, so, exactly. so, so you don't believe in anything mm -hmm. that we're doing, right? Okay. So, you know, it, it, military is a form of establishment. Yeah, so remember what I'm saying here with this part. Institutions. Yeah. Okay. So, so now here, think about this part. <clears throat> What score would you give Jamie Dimon? Oh, very high establishment, but give me the a free score. thinker. I would say 80%, would even say maybe 75? maybe even higher. What would you say, Tom? In the finance uh, establishment, he's 99. I would say 70, 30. Okay. There's a part so of that's, Jamie Dimon that I believe is a rational open market. Guy. Okay, Larry Fink, what percentage is establishment, what percent are not? No, he's, he's, he goes the other more, way from me. More 80, than 85, uh, 15. Okay, more perfect. Than so my point Dimon. here is this. When we're judging these characters and these individuals, you're not going to get 100%. You know, he's wearing a Ukraine pin. I'm, what are you doing wearing a Ukraine pin? Okay, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't wear a pin, or if you're going to sport a pin, wear a chase pin because you're proud of the exactly. company you uh, support. Or guess what? Wear a America pin is what you you, you know you, you you support. I'm not a pin guy myself. I always forget the pins. I was like, how come you forgot to wear? I'm like, did I even forget to wear my own pins for the companies? But, you know, I wish I was a pin person. I forget a lot of different things. I'm a pin guy. But if you do right a pin, here, I know you are. I, I have a neck pin. Pin. Just so you guys. Valutainment pin. And by the way, you always have it on. I rock always it. have it on. I rock it with Tom pride. Puts a U you put a USA pin out, Tom. I'm, I'm USA the majority right. of the time. Yeah. So, but you but think, stopped wearing your Ukraine pin like months ago. Yes. But think about it from that. this standpoint. Moving forward, how I would judge people on what they're saying and what they're flipping or what their position of saying what they just said is. Go based on this. So a 75% establishment person just said that about MACA? What? Yeah. Are you Shocking. kidding? So that's the part mm -hmm. that ought to get people to say, I would have never thought he would have said, let's, let's face it. He was right on NATO. He was right on the economy. Mm -hmm. He did good with this. He was right with China. I don't like the fact when he said this. He was right. So that's the part where somebody ought to look at us and, and establish – that came out of an esta establishment yeah. person's mouth. Yeah. That guy right there, Jamie Dimon, you know who speaks to? He speaks to every single powerful person in the establishment, every one of them. By the way, two days ago I asked a question from you guys, and I've been asking this question a lot this last week. Do you think the phone call is being made where Jamie Dimon and the establishment Wall Street guys are calling Trump saying – if you're willing to put Haley as your VP, you're a lock for president. We will publicly support you. Wow. Do you think a phone call like that is made? I believe a 70% chance that phone call is made. I didn't say it's received. Yeah. I said it's made. And they're saying to him, we will come behind you and we'll give you $200, $300, $400 million, and we will go out there and help raise, and we will defend because we know what you did with the economy and you were right, Okay. Now, the question becomes, will Trump entertain 
that conversation. I believe he will entertain. Mm-hmm. But I also believe a lot of the people on the inside that are 100% supporters to him, he's going to bring it up to him and ask the question that I believe Trump asks a lot. I think Trump say, what do you think, guy? I think Trump will say, what do you think? But he's going to make the decision what he's going to He's going to say, so what do you guys think about the phone call we just got? Should we consider this? Do you agree with them? And it's not going to be asking everybody. It's only going to be asking two, three, four, five people that he fully trusts with a score of 90 plus, right? Yeah. And I believe a couple of them are going to say we ought to entertain it. And I believe three out of five are going to say, hell no, we shouldn't entertain it. One of the three, I believe, is a family member that's going to say don't do it. But I believe after a message like this that just took place and we're in the negotiation phase right now that Tom was talking about two days ago, I think that is a message of Jamie trying to say, hey, whisper, if you accept our offer of putting Haley as your VP, I'm going to do more of this stuff for you. I'm just speculating. But I, I think I, that's a I possibility. Think that could, I, think, I think that'd be uh, – that's a, uh, I, I wouldn't say 70. I maybe go – 60 55 percent because think about it and that says a lot when it comes to that that type of attitude of hey we want a haley who's vocally saying that she just wants war 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 her husband's in the defense contracting thing pet she became a millionaire and by the way coming from a guy that's wearing a pin that's basically the war sending billions and sending all this money i could see how that phone call would happen i still don't think and i would lose so much respect for him if donald trump brings in that swamp creature Mm -hmm. into his Cabinet, I, I, you, you would know, 100% still vote for him though. No, I wouldn't. No, you sit, wouldn't vote for Donald I would Trump sit on the side, brought in Nikki Haley. I would sit on the sideline. Stop because, it. Of course, I would sit on the this is very important. I would sit by on the, the sideline. But by, by the way, I know what you're thinking. This is very important here. Yep. Because he is a part of a, 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 a true super supporter of what they did to what the establishment mm-hmm. did to him. 100%. So I think that is a part. The question becomes behind closed doors. What do you think? Can I? Sorry. Tom's so, been trying to say something for ahead, a few Tom. minutes. Go ahead, Tom. Yeah. So I agreed with you yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, that I think there's a 70% chance that the, the call has been made. Now, will it be received? Now, what I look at is two things. I've been looking at a bunch of things, a bunch of polling data, and guess what happens? The closer America gets to the election, the more seriously people consider the vote. It's amazing. The closer we get. And in between elections, what do we do? Great point, Tom. We stomp our feet. We scream. We have talking heads going back and forth each other. MSNBC, Fox, and a a permanent battle back and forth across the border. We're, you know, achieving nothing, just screaming. Now it gets closer. Who shows up? Two months ago, we saw it. All in pod. Chamath. He gave almost the same analysis that Jamie Dimon did. Remember that, Pat? Yes, he did. He went down. Now, wait a minute, guys. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. I was giving him a D minus because what mainstream media told him, but if you really look at it, it's more like a B plus. Right. A minus. He basically gave in his own way on a grade scale the same thing that Jamie Dimon did. And he's not a regular guy. This is a guy that's a billionaire. He's made a lot of good decisions. He's a very smart guy, very connected in the the Silicon Valley community. And he's only a 50-50 on establishment because his investments are disruptors. So he's really only a 50-50 establishment guy. So the closer it gets here, the more serious that we get. And now we're seeing, and we also have seen the seriousness of the economy, the seriousness of the world stage, the seriousness of several things. And guess what we're saying? Huh, maybe we do need a guy like that. And we've gotten away from the screaming and yelling. That's what I think. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.